Today's video isn't going to be really a tutorial per se, but more of a showcase of a little tool I made. It is called Seku, or the Shy Studios Source Engine Q tool. Now, if you make maps for Source or do any like sound scripting or really anything, this program is probably going to make your life quite a lot easier. Seku actually comes from the Japanese word, which means to hurry or to rush, which is exactly what this program is for to hurry up the production of sound creation in Source. So all this little program does is allow you to quickly make your sound files loopable in Source. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, let me give a little demonstration. So I'm going to open Audacity, and this is a sound that I want to loop. So here's a sound, and we're just going to export this as a WAV. And let's go to Hammer, and let's, you know, make a little map, I guess. <laughs> the light in here. You always gotta have light. And that sound, maybe in here. I have Google for whatever reason. And I just realized that uh, it's not gonna show up since I just created the sound without restarting Hammer, so that's, uh, Welcome to Hammer. And this is a sound that I want to loop. So there's my file. Not start silent and is looped, okay? And this is a sound that I want to loop. And you hear the sound, but it doesn't loop. So it doesn't loop. What do you do? Well, traditionally, what you would do is you would use a program like Goldwave. Now, I love Goldwave. It's such a cool program. Look at, look at this thing. But I don't really use Goldwave at all because I don't know how to use it. These buttons are basically, you know, foreign to me. But I do know how to add Q files. So here's our sound. And the way you would do this is you'd go to Qs and you'd hit New. And you'd call it like Start Q at the start. And you hit OK. And for a long time, everyone said to have two cues, so you'd have a second one at the finish. That's actually not required. You only need the one cue at the beginning. And that's what my program takes advantage of. So all my program does is add a cue point into the WAV file at zero seconds. So we just close this and then save it. And of course, it's giving me problems because it's open in Hammer and Gmod technically still, so we have to close these two things. We can save it and overwrite and it will work now. And this is a sound that I want to loop. And this is a sound that I want to loop. And this is a sound that I want to loop. And this is a sound that I want to loop. So there you can see that's a that's a looping sound and that's how you would do it traditionally. Now, it's not a very complicated process. But whenever you have to deal with you know all of these different sounds, like look at all these sounds that I have to make. So these are my my atmospheres which are generally looping sounds. Uh so you have like all of these sounds that I had to make and edit and every single time that you save a file in Audacity, it's going to get rid of that Q file. So it's not gonna have the Q points for looping anymore. So let me make another sound. This is a second audio file, but this time looped with Seku. Let's export this one. We'll call this one sound two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my program Seku, and I'm just going to drag my sound two onto Seku. And now I'm going to just copy this one over here and I will manually edit the file. And this is a sound that I want to loop. And this is a sound that I want to loop file, but this time loop with set. And this is a sound that I want to loop. This is a second audio file. And this is a sound that I want to loop. So as you can see, Seku just like, you know, significantly speeds up the process for making your sounds loopable. You don't have to open up Goldwave ever again. You can just go right from Audacity 
and then straight up, boom, drag your audio file into Seku, it's done. There's no confirmation, there's no anything. If you really want to, uh, there, you know, you can use the command line. So you can create a script to say you put all of your audio files in like one folder. You could like run a script that automatically uses Seku to convert all of those audio files in that folder. Now, there's also the case of Source 2. So we're just going to copy this over to my sandbox folder. And Source 2 is a little weird when it comes to sounds. Um, things aren't like the same. So you can see here, these are my two sound files. And this is a, this is a, and these wouldn't work in the game as they are currently right now. Uh, however, the moment I played those, they created the proper Valve sound files, so really you could get rid of these WAVs. However, making this a sound, a you like right click and hit create sound. So this is how you would like create an actual sound that you can use in your, you know, your game. So you use these things called dot sounds, and now you see here, we have sound to sound. That's the actual the file you would like file, use in Hammer to second. play. So Source 2, if it has looping Q files in the WAV, it will make this looping. However, Source 2 allows you to just right click and recompile the sounds with or without looping, which is basically like my program built in. If you per se wanted your file to start looping somewhere else, you would still have to use the old Q method because right now Seku doesn't support manually determining like where the Q file is in the audio file. Maybe that will be a future feature, but right now it just does it at the start, which if you're using Source 2, you just, you just use this. It's easier. It's right here. You can download Seku from my website, shystudios.us. The link will be in the description. And it should run on every operating system from Windows XP newer. Make sure you hit that uh, subscribe button and uh, don't miss next week's video, which maybe might possibly actually be like a video about level design. <laughs> maybe?